And we're back with some X4. And we're kind of restarting again. There's been a whole new patch released and I want to do this right. I have kind of have not shown you the, the realness of this game just yet. So I thought we could try a new start that's actually much handier. This start here only became available in the new expansion and it saves you a whole bunch of time. Instead of having to go around doing all these quests to get things started, we start with a quarter of a million in cash. A fast fighter, which is not great, but we do start as well with the headquarters. The player headquarters is already unlocked. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is fine. You should know what the player headquarters is. We are not going to be doing any talking or any questing or anything like that. We're just going to be playing the game and expanding and building an empire as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can. Now, I've done a bunch of Googling in the background and maybe a little bit of testing, but there's only so much you can do. This game has... It takes forever to do anything in this game. This thing is a massive time sink. I've got about 200 hours in X3 Albion Prelude and another 200 in X3 something else. Terran Conflict? I don't know. There's there's two versions of it. Anyway, we immediately start in our little space station, which is great, but we're just going to immediately teleport to our ship. No, the first thing I'm going to do, Vanguard. hop in here, close down that little Yoko Yu Bobby and undock. We don't need to be here. And in fact, we are going to immediately go somewhere else. We're going to go and get ourselves some money. So we're going to go over to a place called Hatikva's Choice. Yeah, this this will all become much clearer later on. But this means we need to get out of here. Uh, you, start going. The ship is not great, but it's also not terrible. The reason I say it's not great is uh, it comes with level 2 stuff on it, which is all well and good. The problem is a lot of the level 2 stuff is like it's got two travel engines in it and the travel engines mean it's very slow to accelerate. It's got really high top speed, it's just it, it like you can see down there the meters per second going up. And this game is huge. This it, Like the vastness of this game means you spend a lot of time like this. Just traveling. Uh, yeah, this is the kind of game that encourages you to sit back into not a lot at time. So it's not very... Ooh, was that a sh enemy ship? No, what, never mind. We are going to take... Jump all the way through here, 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 and I will cut back in when we're closer, or like right on top of it at all possible. Yeah, for this sort of stuff, bring a cup of tea. Hmm. Or something a little bit stronger, I don't judge. The scale of this game is, it's pretty amazing. All of these little sectors we're traveling through, like we're moving through this at 5.8 kilometers a second. Jump that is just billion. insane. And you can get out and walk it if you want. You can uh, move along at about four meters a second in a spacesuit. Uh, I wouldn't advise it though. It'll you, you'll run out of oxygen long before you get to anywhere. Like that's a that's a fun mechanic. Let's not let's not actually get involved in that one. All right. Once we've passed through this gate, oh, oh, steering this thing at this speed is like steering a cow. Entering system eighteen billion. Perfect. Well, that uh, autopilot is taking us where we need to go. You can actually watch our progress here. I'm going to watch us all the way along and see if anything shows up. Sometimes you can find some loot just lying around on the ground. But uh, so far, I don't think we're going to be that lucky. I think we're just about heading to where we want to, are we? Yep, Entering we're over at system. Hatikva's Choice. And the reason we come here is, is normally there's a big Barney going on when you arrive. As in, there's a whole bunch of these annoying things trying to kill you. And also, there's a story mission that happens here. We don't care about that. We're just here for the fighting. Where's the fighting? Sorry. Yeah, we're just about in the right position. Let's just cut drives. And what we're going to do here is deploy a satellite. Now, you get a whole bunch of them. We start with three advanced satellites, which is very rare. They're, those things are actually quite expensive. About 60 grand a pop. It costs us a little bit, but since we start with them, we're going to deploy one right here. And once that's deployed, we go back onto this map screen here. This is the little satellite on us. And that big area we can see, that's also all us. Ooh. Gee, one Train. second. Mineral. Vanguard. We're just going to get out of the way here. Engaged. You see, this place over here, this gate, there's going to be a bunch of angry things coming out of there shortly. We don't want to be any near, we're near that gate when that happens. However, we want to be close enough that we can swoop in and scoop up the goodies that they drop. They're loot pinatas. So these enemies that are coming out of here, think of this as if you're playing Kenshi, you're hanging around the gate guards and you're letting the gate guards kill stuff for you. If you're playing Star Sector, you're hanging around in hyperspace or near near battlefields so that you can, you know, loot corpses or, you know, loot ships and take their junk. That's sort of what we're doing right here. Well, that's the that's the theory we're going to go for. Disengage. Yeah, uh, we're just going to hang around here, hanging far back from us until the baddies show up. We arrived uh, maybe a little bit earlier than normal. I took a very fast route here. 
It does also help that we spawned over here. In fact, we've got, a, well, not all the map, but we've got a small chunk of the map revealed, several more chunks than I'm normally used to. So this is actually quite handy. And you can see, we can even see a bunch of the Taladi, the Trinity, like all of these people here. But what we want to do just right now is get a bunch of money together so that we can afford to buy some mining ships. Then we're going to use those mining ships to make a bunch more money to build some factories. We're not going to be fighting our way up. That takes way too long. You, you can sink 40, 50 hours flying around in fighters doing things. We want to maybe skip that just a little bit. Ah, here comes our first customer now. Uh, yes, it's called a T. Whatever. Uh, this guy is probably going to pick a fight with some people around here. Probably that Quantum Fab if I had to choose. What are you doing? Okay, he's going to travel through the gateway. Now... All of these systems are interconnected via gateways or jump points or speed things or slipstream stuff or like there's there's so many different types of transportation at this point. Who knows? Uh, that guy's gone though. We'll just have to wait till some other people show up. They'll start fighting and when they do, they'll start dropping loot. It looks like the locals are being friendly. In that case, I think it's time we started swooping in and grabbing the loot. Uh, you can see these little grey containers here. This is Nividium Crystalline, that's terrible. That's Nividium Oxide. Oh god, that's also terrible. But there's probably a few other bits and bobs around. Oh, there's a processing unit, processing panel unit. Some of these things are worth some money, some of these things are worth a lot more money. Oh, programmable field array, that's actually a decent one. You know what, we'll go pick them up first, then we'll worry about it. First I'll show you how you pick them up. Uh, you. We've already targeted one of them. Let's go have a quick word. Oh my god, it's 92 kilometers away. This might take us a second to get there. I said, this game's a, a lot of... There's a lot of waiting in this game. Well, we're getting close to the thing. Uh, well, not as close as I'd like. Oh my god, are we still four kilometers away? The autopilot's decent, but it's not amazing. Now, if you press the O key, it winds up the magnet on your ship, so to speak, and it sort of sucks in all the stuff that's around you. Autopilot disengaged. And... Yeah, this stuff will all fly into your inventory. So down here we can see drop containers. We've got NVIDIA Mo Oxide and Vinci Travel Truster mod and a bunch of other stuff. That's fine. Then we just, well, go get the rest of this stuff. Uh, what else has we got here? Processing panel. Programmable field array. I want one of those. Autopilot. Engage. Autopilot. Disengaged. Oh, there we go. We got a couple more. Done. Done. Then what we can do is we can actually go into our inventory and have a look at this stuff. In our inventory, you can see here that programmable field array is worth 140 grand, which is kind of nice. Also, there'd be a few other things we'd like. Processing panels and all that, they're not really worth that much. They're more for other things. But we're going to go around and grab as much of this stuff as we possibly can while staying as far away from the bad guys as we possibly can. Oh, buggery. That's a lot of them. Uh, we're just going to stay way back and let the locals handle this. This is nothing to do with us. Nothing to see here. Let them all fight it out. We'll pick through the we'll pick through the corpses. I mean, ru ru rubbish, whatever. There's also like a whole bunch of silicon here we can't grab. The reason we can't grab that silicon, it's uh, it fits in a different type of your cargo bay. You have two different types. See, while well, that's going on, the reason we come here so early is all the factions start with a lot of stuff early on. So the bad guys, the good guys, all of them have lots of troops, and then they immediately throw them at each other, and a whole bunch of them die. And then it's much more low intensity conflict after that. So you're much better coming here early. If you play the game for five or six hours doing missions and things and then you come back here then, well, you'll find that there's not a lot left. Um, all of this stuff will despawn after a while and all the corpses will go away, all the, the dead ships, all the, the crates, they'll all disappear and you'll be left with nothing to salvage. So you're best to come here nice and early, grab all the stuff for the first hour or two of your playthrough just to make sure you got a, a few nice things going on. What's happened over here? Ooh, processing panels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll keep an eye on this. Uh, just basically you're a vulture. That's what we are. It's not a... A, a glamorous lifestyle, but it is an efficient way of making money reasonably safely. Right now you can see the place is, well, it's still a bit dangerous. There's a couple of ships floating around, but there's an awful lot of fighters out here as well fighting them. So that's keeping them distracted. And there is so many crates, just like everywhere. So it's just a case of, oh, there's a security decryption one. Those things are pretty expensive, though. I don't think I can sell them, though. They are useful for a quest. So let's just go grab those real quick. Where are you? Yeah, right about there. So we generally just get in close, start hitting the O key to start magneting stuff in. Then once we get close enough, we hit the brakes. And then boom, we grab them both. Pause the game again, find out where we're going next. Oh my god, there's just so much stuff. I should probably start prioritizing the more valuable things. Things have well went about, well, as well as can be expected. They can go slightly better, slightly worse, it depends. But as you'll see here, there is a lot of trash over here. We 
well, we didn't do it, but a lot of enemies died here and they dropped a lot of stuff. You can't collect it all fast enough. Literally, it drops so quick that it starts despawning before you can grab the lot. There's even some stuff left, but this is all heavy cargo. So this is stuff that requires you to have a decent sized cargo bay to hold it all. We do not have one of those. We're just a fighter. All we can hold is the light stuff. And I, as far as I'm aware, you can hold it a pretty much infinite amount of this junk. So programmable field arrays, space fly eggs, this kind of junk here that goes in in your personal inventory. This travels with you between ships and it's, it's just you can carry as much as you want. Right, but now that we've got all of this stuff, what do we want to do with it? Well, we want to sell it. Problem is, most of it's black market stuff, as in it won't be bought by most of the legit sides. If they do a cargo scan on us, like you might get in the star sector, we would raise an awful lot of red flags, because a lot of the stuff we're holding is like AI stuff related to those ships, uh, endangered species, that kind of thing. All not good. What we want to do, though, is go to Silent Witness 11. This place has a pirate base in here somewhere. You know what? Let's just target this thing. Yeah, uh, set guidance to that object. We're going to pop over there while there's a lull in the combat. I, either they've run out of ships or they've decided that this is a bad idea. But considering their AI in this game, well, let's just say they're a bunch of Muppets, the AI, so they don't really care about uh, good or intelligent decisions. They're just going to do what they're going to do. Anyway, we're going to go fly over to that pirate space. We'll, we can get there fairly quick because there's these highways. These are uh, speedways of just getting from one place to another really, really quickly. And let's see if the... Yeah, the autopilot in this is not terrible, actually. It's pretty decent. And system. as you can see there, you can move at some serious speed along these super highways. They are excellent. Trying to do this stuff at normal speed, we, we top out at about 5 k kilometers per second, and it'd take us a while to get up to that. And if we hit any speed bumps along the way, we would be in trouble. And where are you going? Oh, it was over there. I could have sworn it was on the grid. Yeah, never mind. And I'll keep an eye on here. I'm sure there will be more ships along, and when they do, we want to pop back as quick as we can to make sure we can get the loot. After entering Silent Witness 11, let's autopilot. just turn off Disengage. autopilot for a minute and do a quick scan. Autopilot engaged. What we're looking for here is... Ah, maybe it's there. Uh, let's, uh, and let's target station. this thing. Hopefully that's the, the base. There is a base around here somewhere that we can trade with. It's sort of like a free port. Uh, space Fuel Factory. No, you're not the one. All right, let's get a little bit closer. There we are. Free port. As a free port, they don't care what you trade. Oh, I should probably slow it down before I crash. Or just crash. Whatever. Oh, oh, oh. Well, close enough. Docking granted. Thank you. Sorry about the chip paint. Happens all the time, I'm sure. We managed to land perfectly safely without incident at all at all. And you're going to be tempted to do this thing called trade. Don't. This is more the... This is more your default trade, your main trade, whatever trade. It's it's meant for trading back and forth between places. We don't want to do any of that. We have to get out of there here and trade like a bunch of filthy peasants by walking up to an actual person and trading with them. Uh, and I can't even figure out how I can jump to this transporter faster. I have to actually walk all this way. It's, it feels very strange. Anyway, we are going to go to the transport se or trade section. Uh, there's the trade guy over there, but first we're going to go to the crafting bench because all the stuff we've been grabbing, some of it can be crafted occasionally. I have enough space fly eggs. I would have liked to make space fly caviar. That stuff's worth a cool million. Damn it. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for it. Anyway, uh, we have four security decryption systems. These things are used for hacking, and we've already got four of them. And some of the parts we've picked up can be used to make more of things. I think we'll get a security slicer. We might need that at some point in the future. Uh, the rest of these, well, we can't afford to make them. We'd really like to make a SATA drive, but we're missing a damage singularity engine. That was one of the things those guys could drop, but they didn't, unfortunately. Anyway, let's go over here to this guy and sell off a, a bunch of our goodies. Yeah, we don't want that heuristic core. We, uh, we'll keep the flux capacitor. We actually want to make a SATA drive. The SATA thing allows us to skip time, which is really useful. We also need one of these programmable arrays for that, so we're going to keep a programmable array, we're going to keep a flux capacitor, always keep at least one of those, and uh, yeah, if we could find the damaged temporal drive thing, we would also keep one of those so we could craft a thing you would buy. What's that? Uh, we're just going to get rid of all this stuff. I don't think we need any of it, and if we do, well, my bad. Oh, you can't sell your security decryption systems. You have to get up to, like, really high level of trade with people to do this, and only a few sides will actually buy it, namely pirates and these guys, so... Yeah, we're going to be stuck with those for a while. We might get some missions, though, later on that might find use of them. Oh, we've got a whole bunch of this Magilit stuff. It's actually worth a fair chunk of change. So, yeah, we're going to sell it off as well. And modular triggers, sure, take them. Why not? 
Uh, that gives us 834 grand. Damn, if we could get some more space flies, we'd be a million and 1.8 million. And uh, while we're here, maybe grab some stuff. I would like a spacesuit Mark II thrusters. Yes, please. That actually makes us much more mobile. Uh, otherwise, your spacesuit is just horrendous. I don't think we need any other stuff just yet, so... Confirm. Thank you. Thank you very much. That puts us up to a million. You know what? We might just go back and get maybe a little bit more money at that location. Uh, it's just, uh, I don't think we have quite enough. I'd like to have at least a couple of million before we start doing anything too serious in terms of the trading front. Give me a minute. I'm going to head back to Loot Central. After far too much time wandering around picking up junk that got left behind, we have managed to actually get enough space fly eggs to make some caviar. That's actually worth a cool million. Those space flags, keep an eye out for them. Turns out those things real tasty, or at least someone finds them tasty. We've also got five of these security decryption things, which we have no use for. One security slicer, which we probably have no use for. A uh, bunch of other random things we're not going to need, and we still have not managed to find a damaged singularity engine, which is really frustrating. It's okay. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Anyway, we are going to sell all of this stuff to this guy and see how much we can pull in. Well, that's a cool million we're pulling in from that, except we forgot the spaceflight caviar. That's, uh, that's a good 2.2 million from this run. Nice, that gets us up to 3.2 million. I think that's enough to start doing a, a few things. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Safe journey. Yeah, it's ominous. All right, so back to our ship. It is time for us to start doing no, a little mining. Well, we're not going to do some mining. We're going to pay someone to do the mining for us because I, I really don't want to do mining. In fact, let's go back. The thing is, you want to find it. They change up everything every round. So there's a little bit of randomization going on about where things end up. So I say we go back to the Grand Exchange, which seems like a nice location. Uh, yeah, we're going to start guidance to there. We're going to go to the Grand Exchange and we're going to see about buying ourselves a miner and using that miner to mine some stuff. Uh, this might take a minute to transport there, though. I, I couldn't leave a ridiculous choice. Every time I, I was going to go buy a miner, there was just more stuff here to find, and I couldn't stop myself. I just kept coming back again and again. This is like my second time back. But this time, we've actually got our hands on that other thing we need to put together, the uh, SETA module thingy. So, okay, we'll definitely call it quits at this. This should put us at about 5 million in cash. So, yes, 5 million in cash is, is more than enough to get us started. We probably would have been good with 4, but I couldn't help myself. It's like it's like an addiction. You know, once you start collecting the monies, you just want to collect more of the money. After flying all the way back to this free trade place over... Whoop, where is it? Over in Silent Witness 11. Once we got to the free port... All we've done is we've popped over here, went straight down to the traders area again, and we can now craft ourselves a singular uh, SETA. Uh, one second, let's craft this item. Ah, excellent. Damn it, we're two space fly eggs short of a million bucks. Mm, that is just not fair. Nope, nope. It's okay. We're just going to sell off the other junk we've got. Can I help? We are already up to, what, like 4.8 million? This should put us over into five. Actually, not quite well okay we picked up a hand laser while we we're here we've also got the bomb launcher we basically upgraded our spacesuit the whole way between a few of these things eh, okay that last one wasn't so good but i don't care we got the SETA device all right goodbye thank you for everything that was uh, wonderful and all that but it's time to go show why we spent so much time and effort getting that damn seta device so to get where we wanted to go we just went onto the world map and you can see these big sort of uh, sergeant looking things? I don't know, they, they remind me of a military symbol of, of rank. That is a shipyard. Uh, these things over here that look like... Or that, that thing there that looks like the symbol from Star Trek, that is actually a wharf. A wharf is for upgrading your ships with different parts of engines and things like that. A shipyard is for actually buying new ships. So you can see, yep, there's another one there. There's a, a, the Argon Wharf and there's the Argon Shipyards. Now the Teladi are all about profits and, you know, basically making lots of money and stuff. They're very money-oriented. The Argon are like, they used to be the sort of big bad humans, but then they got replaced by the Terrans, so now they're just sort of like the fluffy humans. I don't know, they're less militaristic or something. I think the game's kind of mutated over time. Well, it kind of had to. Anyway, we are just about ready to pull in here. We want to go buy ourselves our first miner. Uh, I should probably stop before I crash into these things. After we touch down here, we should be able to buy stuff. And to support the protection of large and extra large sized ships, consider deploying a satellite here to receive real time updates. Hmm. It's actually good to know. 
So basically, these things won't produce large and extra-large ships unless we provide them with the resources. And of course, we can make a profit providing those resources. You may also want to learn how to identify profitable trades using the map. Once we have spoken to and hired a, re a relief pilot, open the tutorial's help menu with the H and start the map trading tutorial. Thank you very much. Anyway, we are going to go in here and buy ourselves a ship. Uh, we are going to want to get ourselves... What? There's only two sizes? We're small. God damn it. Oh. Okay, so it turns out the shipyards only give you large and extra large ships. The wharfs give you medium sized ships. So it turns out, yep, I probably should have done more research on that. But in, in, in my defense, this is my first time buying some ships in here. But we should have enough money to buy ourselves more than one miner. We should be able to buy several and then start raking in the cash. And then hopefully get into some factory building. I mean, I'm going to try to. I'm treating this more like a factory colony builder type thing than more of a let's get around and shoot people. We want to get money first, that will allow us to buy expensive ships to shoot people with, and then we don't have to worry so much about losing ships because we'll be able to replace the ones we, you know, accidentally crash into stuff. We made it to the wharf. Welcome. Time to buy some ships. Oh my god. Alright, we're gonna go with medium, uh, namely because we're going to want a mineral miner. So we're gonna buy you. Now, it's going to want you to select stuff. Like, see the way this is in red? This means you haven't selected engines, you haven't selected thrusters. We're just going to go with low presets. You can go with minimal. I prefer to just go with low, at least to give it a half-decent chance. Uh, this thing is 455 grand. Still pretty expensive. Let me just double-check the weapons and a few things here. Yeah, mining drills, and uh, I'm going to go with more mining drills, I think. This thing comes by default with the captain, which is good, because I didn't realize that was a thing. Uh, you don't have enough, not enough resource at the station. Order may take a long time. Current data chip has not been added to the shopping list. Missing resources, whole parts. Fine. We will confirm the order. How long is that going to take? Well, I was going to go off and find some hull parts to finish this off, but it seems they're just about finished. I'm going to pop back in here, dock again, and we're going to set this thing up to go do some automatic mining for us. So we've gone back to this place, and oh my god, the, the mining in this. Like, this game is not designed for humans to play. <laughs> okay, so this... This is our ship. This is the new ship that we have bought, and we've got it, and we want to go in here to... Behavior. Wait. Yeah, behavior here. Then we want to go in here, and instead of having its default behavior as hold position, we want it to... Ah, local auto mine. Find mine and sell the specified resource without traversing any jump gates or accelerators. We can do that. So... Done? Um... Now, does that mean it's actually going to start, though? That's the question. Wait, wait, wait. I think I got it. Okay. Okay, okay. We go in here. We set it to local auto mine. We set it to ore. And we confirm. Now, I'm not sure there's actually any ore for it to mine in here. So, that might be a bit of a problem. But we can actually move it to one place first. In fact, hmm. We want you to undock. Oh, would you look at that? It's leaving all on its lonesome. Well, own some, I should say. Uh, you, we need to undock. See where our ship went. Come on, turn around. I think our ship has le Oop. I think our ship has left. So let's go hunt it down and see where it's going. There's our baby. She's going to get a bit of mining on. And she's bouncing off the- Oh, she's just like her father. Totally smacking into space stations, left, right, and center. Aww. Uh, hopefully they'll figure out some way of actually doing something profitable around here. Uh, let's go buy another ship and set it up in another sector. Actually, there's a helium mine here. Things I've been trying to look around and find what we can do, and there is a helium refinery over here. So this thing definitely buys helium. Uh, or, or does it? Yes, helium. Oh, medical supplies, nostril vault, energy cells, and helium. And in this sector, there is 111k helium. Not a lot, but you know what? We're going to get a miner and get that miner to mine helium for that refinery. What are you doing? You actually doing anything to make... You know what? I don't even know what you're doing. We're going to let you keep doing what you're doing. Hopefully at some point some money will appear in our bank account. Uh, following thing, this, this thing around, we can see it's actually mining stuff. What it actually does with it, I have no idea. Where'd you go? Oh. Too close. Too close. Radio. Let, let's see if it actually goes and sells it now. I'm really curious. It used to be in the previous games you could just set these up to automatically do it, and I presume it's something similar in this one. This should now wander off. Oh, up to 7,500. Hopefully it finds somewhere to sell the stuff. 
Uh, let's go buy ourselves a helium one and get the two of them running. In fact, let's start buying lots of these miners. If we can leave them running while we're off doing missions, we can make money while doing missions, and we can make money from the mining in the background. That's sort of the way you want to roll. After spending far too long looking at uh, a lot of tutorials and reading things and all sorts of stuff, we've got this guy. Look, you can see his tail. It's actually clipping right through the chair. We hired ourselves a pilot. I mean... Why drive when you could be driven, so to speak? Also, this is actually really handy for automating a bunch of stuff. But that that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is... Yeah, we bought... Like, all each one of these little green things here is a ship we purchased. Yeah, we bought a bunch of miners just to sort things out. And I want to show you how I eventually figured out what was going on, how and why and... Mm. All right. You see these things up here, trade, mining, and others? That's what makes your map so messy. When you turn on trade, you can see all this junk going on and you, you don't know what it is and it makes it harder to click and normally you're just better off turning it off until you want to use it. And what we want to do is use trade right about now. Uh, what we'd also like to do is add and remove some filters. So for it, we want to use the, the very basic stuff, uh, as in the stuff you can mine. Now, I've played this game enough that I know what they are, but uh, looking them up by default, I'm not even sure how you would, but you'd probably look up the calculator. Anyway, so ice, ore, silicon, methane, Helium and hydrogen. Yes, they are all the basic resources, as in you can send out miners to mine those things. And if we hit OK there, what it does is it starts filtering things out. For example, if we hover over methane there, you'll see that it sends a little arrow over to that graphene refinery. That tells us that that graphene, that methane, ref, ah, that graphene refinery wants methane and will buy 934. Price it's willing to pay is about 41. You have over helium, it shows it actually goes to a helium refinery, which, yep, yeah, 693 parts, and it will pay 37 apiece. So you can use this to go around to sectors. Now, yeah, let's say, ooh, this one over here is pretty good. This one here has silicon. It wants 46,434 silicon, willing to pay 130 a pop. It's willing to buy helium, it's willing to buy hydrogen. There's a bunch of places around here that want stuff. Now... One second, we'll zoom in a bit. This place actually over here wants ore. This place over here wants methane. This place wants ice. We can... I've gone around all these places and what I've done is start dropping off these little satellites. Those satellites we dropped off before, we dropped off a big one. Where is it? We're over here in Hedekva's Choice. So that we could, you know, monitor the area, keep an eye on the enemies, and see all the boxes that were flying about the place. But now we're using smaller ones because they're way, way cheaper. I think it's about six grand for a small satellite, but it's about 40 grand for one of the larger ones. We've went, has gone around to all of these places, and we've left satellites around all the factories. So we can get a good idea of what's going on, see what their prices are, all that kind of stuff, and get an idea of where we want to put all of our ships. Who's buying what, basically? So, yeah, let's grab, say, this place here. This place wants methane. In fact, it wants, wow, 30,000 parts of methane at 55 a pop. Uh, anything else in here? Well, this place here looks like it could do with more silicon, more helium, helium, and more Ore. Actually, you know, we've got ore covered, and we've got ice covered. I've got two ships already on that. We have a, a magpie here, a Teladium magpie that is, yep, it's mining around here, and it's looking for ore. And we also have one doing ice. Uh, yeah, we've got an ice miner as well out. It's also assigned to Grand Exchange 3. This is the name of the place here. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign out another silicon mine miner, a helium and a hydrogen, and we're going to send all three of them here. And we're going to do that, well... Hopefully pretty quickly. Uh, we can come in here. Now, we could sit down in this pilot seat and do all sorts of stuff, but you don't need to. Uh, what we can do is just go over. We actually have a presence here, so we can go click on the, the wharf, right-click it, and go, we would like to buy ships. And that's the great thing about this, is you can do a lot of this stuff remotely. So let's give us a gas miner. Actually, no. We'll get one of the regular miners first. We'll give it a low preset. We're going to add you to the shopping list. We're also going to get two gas miners, which we will give them a low preset as well. What are you going to be? Oof, yeah, that's going to hurt, but we'll take you two. Uh, we'll confirm those orders. And that was not added to the shopping list because I'm a Muppet. One second, we'll order another two. Gas miner, low preset, you have to add to shopping list. Ugh, I keep forgetting that every time. All right. Gas miner as well. That's two gas miners, low preset, add to shopping list. We shall confirm. God, we've dropped to about 2.8 million. Keep an eye on that 2.8 million, though. Even though it's going to take a while for this to uh, kick in. Ooh, actually, that reminds me. One thing we can do is we can now use the SATA drive to speed up time. While we're in here. Actually, wait. We should probably be sitting in that seat. Hey, you. Get out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give me that look. Yeah, I decided not to hire uh, people who, you know, wear clothes. They're just way too spendthrifty. You know, the Taladi, they don't even bother with clothes. That's how much they care about money. All right, 
There we go. We can now speed up time while we're in here. And we should be able to get these things produced. Okay, are you finished? Come on. There we go. You're done. All right, while that's going on, we are going to select that chip. Once that chip is selected, pop over here, local auto mine, and the where we want you to mine is silicon ore, and we want you to do it down in, I think it was 18, no, it's not 18 billion, it's Grand Exchange 3. So, if you would please go to Grand Exchange 3 and do your job, we shall confirm that. And off they go. They'll go off and do their job down here and mine their silicon and do all that stuff. Uh, who else have we got that's free? Ooh, actually, I want to rename you so I actually know you've been assigned out. Otherwise, I'll forget. Done. Uh, that leaves... This one here is actually unassigned. We'll find a job for you in a minute once these two gas ones are done. Well, while this was going on and they were building, uh, I sort of found an alternative choice for us. Black Hole Sun down here belongs to the Argons. And as well as that, they have got a graphene refinery, which requires methane, another graphene refinery, refinery which requires methane, a refined goods complex which also requires methane, and then finally another graphene refinery which requires methane. So all of those places require a basic resource that we can provide effectively for free. Once you assign the miners out, they go to their job and we don't have to do anything. They're basically mining raw resources and feeding them in. It's unlike trading. If you trade, you have to buy something cheap and sell it for more. In this case, we don't really lose anything. The only way we could lose anything is if these ships died. So I think we're going to assign two of them down here to refine, to uh, mine methane for all of the production facilities in this area. So now let's look at this sucker in action. Uh, we have one methane miner right here, and it's mining methane. It hasn't actually filled any of its capacity just yet, but right now we can check under current orders, and its current orders is mine resources and gather resources. So that's what it's actually doing. It's mining that asteroid right there. Then over here we have the other methane miner. That one's actually got a full tank. You can see here its fill capacity is 12,960, and it is current order is to dock. Dock at the A A or G graphene refinery. So, actually, where is orders? Let's see, commands. Ah, dock, dock and wait, execute trade. So it's already queued up all of this stuff. Let's just watch it do its thing. So now it flies down to this section. This place has a thirst for methane. It's got about its capacity for 659. Oh, more, who knows? And let's speed this along a bit, shall we? And it automatically docks up, the captain will do their thing, and then they're going to sell the methane they've got on board. You can see they've got 12,960 right here. We should hear a little chiching noise in a bit. Well, it won't be quite a chiching noise, but we'll figure it out. No. And when this does happen, we will get a notification on our screen. If we go back here, in the bottom left where it says 11 inactive missions, we'll actually see a little message pop up telling us how much money we've made. Uh, you guys want to... Ah, there we go. We received 89 grand for that and our new bands. Oh, actually, we received 92 grand for something else. That was some other trader dropping it off. So we've now achieved basically passive income where we don't have to do anything. And these little miners are going to start running around the place pulling us in money. I don't know how much they've pulled us in so far at this point. Uh, I'm sure I could probably figure it out. There's a screen somewhere that does it. But honestly, there is so many screens in this game. It's really weird because because this game starts off, it feels like you're playing, you know, a flight sim almost game. But really, it's more of a economy simulator. I mean, you could spend 40 hours just flying around in fighters, killing stuff, but I'd prefer to do this. Now, what I want to do is go around and start scouting new sectors. In fact, I'm going to start buying ships to do the scouting for me. Then I'm going to start dropping off satellites in those areas and filling up miners in those sections. You see, every time you trade with people, you actually increase their liking for you. Here's all the different factions in the game. Oh my god, there's so many. Anyway, Taladi Company. The Taladi Company is important. We're at plus six with them. The reason that's important, well, not so much important, is the reason I'm pointing at that is we're trading into Taladi space over here. Grand Exchange, this is all owned by the Taladi crowd. Uh, this place over here, all owned by the Taladi crowd as well. So this is Taladi shipyards, Taladi factories. Every time we trade with them, it increases their liking of us. And currently we're at plus six. Once you get to plus ten, you can get some other stuff. We can't really build any factories just yet, I've discovered. You either need to get research or I think you can become friendly enough with people that they'll let you use their blueprints. But let's get one little factory down before we go. You see, we started off with this uh, headquarters. Now, you don't normally start with a headquarters. This is the only start I'm aware of that starts you with the headquarters. But we can maybe stick on some solar panels here and start generating some uh, energy. Like if we, say, hover over this whole parts factory here, uh, that place requires energy cells. It's one of the wares they buy. Um, pretty much everything requires energy in one way, shape, or form. So let's see if we can't add on a little energy production facility to this. Uh, configure station. Excellent. Energy cells. Yes, we would like those, please. Uh, we would 
put them onto one section. You see, they've got all these dock sections that show up on each side. Uh, let's maybe stick on a basic module here. Yeah, that allows us to uh, spread out the amount of things that get attached on. Uh, that should probably get turned out. Yeah, let's rotate that down. Much better. Actually, a little bit more. Then we're going to grab ourselves power. Right, not in storage module. Production module. You. Um, hmm. Push you down for a minute and we're going to rotate you around. Rotate you like that. Excellent. Boom. Snaps right on there. Now we're going to need a storage module as well because that produces energy cells. Those energy cells need somewhere to be stored before we can sell them on. Ah, here we go. All we have access to is the small container modules. Well, fine. We will actually... Dock module first, and we'll put on a storage module on the end. There we go. Snaps right on. Perfect. Then we shall confirm this. Confirm module changes. Excellent. Assign a builder to start the construction. We have to assign or hire a builder. Now, I'm not sure how much this is going to cost. Now, if we zoom out, we should be able to look around and see if there's a builder on the map somewhere. Anywhere. Anywhere. Ah. Hiring fee, 50 grand. And uh, we shall get this guy. Since they're the only one. Uh, selected object. Yep, perfect. They're selected. And not enough resources to build first module. Okay, but I presume they'll probably build it. It says seven minutes here. It's missing resources for the build, but that's fine. We can assign them out money. I'm trying to figure out how much this damn thing costs. But meh, that's the basics of building. But honestly, I'm going to need to do a bunch of research in the background. The amount of tutorials I had to watch to figure this all out is incredible. This game is... I feel like after, you know, Dwarf Fortress, things would get easier, but this definitely feels like it's up there in terms of the difficulty front. Like, most of this stuff is just not built into the game, teaching you how to do this naturally. You'd have to go through a whole bunch of tutorials, and even then, there's not really enough in there. You need to go online and find resources. Even the wiki doesn't have enough. It's, it's mental. I love this game. It's crazy. All right. But I think, yeah, in the background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around, do some more exploring, and just throw down miners. The great thing about miners is you can't really lose money on them unless they get destroyed and it'll raise our ranking. So I want the Argon Argonese to like us more. I want the Teladi to like us more. I'd also maybe like to get the, the Paranid on board. This gives you access to different ships, weapons, production chains, all that type of stuff. So making everyone like you is usually a good plan. I'd even like the Turrens like us. They have some good military ships I'd like to buy. And the end goal would be build up a nice big empire and then start churning out things like, I don't know, aircraft carriers, Cram the, or carriers, cram them full of fighters. Like the fighter we're flying right now, we could get a carrier, cram 30 of them or 100 of them in there and go like, well, use that and a few destroyers and some cruisers and things to go around and mash stuff down. Problem is you need a massive empire to support all of that stuff. Sorry about the delay getting this episode out. It's just, this game takes a lot of hours to get anything done. There's a lot of slow traveling between places. I really thought I'd get more, but yeah, I'm beginning to remember this game. It has a, it's not so much that it's got a learning curve. It's got a lot of, grind to it. It's just got a lot of stuff you got to do that's not very cinematic, let's just say. It's a very lot of, lot of cinematic stuff going on, but there's always something to be doing. It really is. Like, you, there's loads of missions I haven't even touched on that you can do. I'm just trying to get up the basics of a little bit of an income so that we can uh, move a little bit more quickly to where we're going. Anyway, I, uh, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck. Good <laughs> luck.